In this video, we will see how to create new spools for directional control valves with Automation Studio. This function allows you to create a spool you can't find in the spool library. First, we will introduce a valve spool designer located in the hydraulic library. This is a very useful tool to help us configure a valve spool. And we will introduce some of the rules in selecting the number of ports. This is the spool we are going to create. In the Automation Studio interface, there's the Library Explorer with ready-to-use components. In the Hydraulic Library, you will find the Valve Spool Designer. When you click on it, you can see the list of components we are going to use to design this valve spool. The first thing we need to do is open the View tab to activate the grid. Then we can select the empty spool position and place it on the grid. Looking at our model, we have seven ports, two on the top and five on the bottom. Now we will select the parts according to our model. Double-click on the symbol to open the component properties. Go to Component Images where we have a table and some diagrams. Because our model has seven ports, according to ISO standards, we can see there are two possible options here. Each option corresponds to one diagram. When we look at this diagram here, we can see it has the number of ports we need. Two on one side and five on the other. To select this diagram, below we have to input the corresponding characteristics. Our diagram has nine ports, so in this field we input nine and close. Now our spool has nine ports on each side. Let's start designing. From the left, our model has an orifice and a plug. So let's pick up this throttle valve and the check valve. It's very important to remember that when designing a valve spool, we can only use the components in this menu. We cannot take components from the pumps or pressure valves. So be sure to only drag components from the valve spool designer. The plug goes right here. And now we need a line. Leave a space and draw a line. We need another line to go diagonally. So we find the right place to start and end our line. Then we right-click to make it a direct line. Now we need another plug, so we can copy this plug and put it here. This line needs an orifice, but this orifice is too big. To resize it, just right-click, uncheck Lock Size to unlock it, and make it smaller. Holding the Shift key, we can insert it into this line. Next, to design this arrow here, we need to click on the line and go to the Edit tab. The blue arrow pointing left is the beginning of the line, pointing right is the line end. These outer arrows adjust the view presentation. Let's select our arrow, since the standard is 9, we will take this one, and change the view presentation to 100%. And here it is. Next, we have this check valve, which we've already put on the grid, and we need another orifice, so we can copy the one we've already resized. This check valve is pointing the wrong way. We can rotate it so it aligns with this line. In the Edit ribbon, click on Position and Rotate. To rotate it, click on one corner and turn. Now we can put it on the line. We can see it's too big. Just like the orifice, right-click to unlock the size, and we resize it. Now we can put it back on the line. We can do the same with this second orifice. Once the rotation center appears in here, we rotate it and insert it on the line.
Next, to create this line, click on the port and find the right position and double click. Now we need an arrow here. Select the line and the left arrow since this is the beginning of the line. Again, we choose number 9 at 100%. We have completed configuring this left spool. So now we can generate the spool and save it. Highlight the spool and right click. Select Generate Spool Position. The window shows the number of ports, the upper ports and bottom ports. It's all correct, so click Create. Right click again to save spool position with proportional and on off, assign it a name, new spool for example, and save it in your files. Now we need to create the other two spools even though we have them in the library. Later we will see why. To save time, we've already created them using the same process as our new spool. Save them all in the same folder with the same name. This is an important step since each spool must be saved in the database in order to save the space. Save the spool position, proportional on off, with the same new spool. It tells us the new spool component has been inserted into the list of customized spools. That means it is now in the same database. And we do the same with the right spool. Now we are going to configure the directional control valve with the spool we've modeled here. To do this, we will access the spool library and browse the customized spool positions in order to finish the whole directional control valve. We are going to use the spool we designed before. In the main hydraulic library, go to Proportional Directional Valve, use User Defined Modeling, and select One Directional Valve. Drag and drop it onto our workspace. Double click on the image to open the component properties. In the technical specifications, we can find the builder. First, we should define the number of ports. We need seven, so here we choose seven and click OK. As you can see, the image has changed. In this space on the left, we need to replace the question mark with the spool we designed earlier. Double click on the question mark to open the library of spools. First, we select the layout of ports. This gives us five options. The second one is the one we want. Click on it to open another library. But this library does not have the spool we want, so we need to use the one we defined earlier. Click the User Defined button below. This brings us to our folder where we saved the new spool positions earlier. Click Open. As we can see, this contains only the three spool positions we've created. In fact, we don't have anything else in this library. This is why we have to create each spool, even though we had them in the library before. We choose the left spool and click OK. Now the middle spool. And the right one. Now we have all three spools in a one directional valve. And that's how to create new spools and configure a directional valve using the spools you've created.